Welcome to flight exercise number one, covering basic maneuvers and emergency. The purpose of this exercise is to let you try the basic functionality of the drone. We're also testing the three flight modes so you know exactly how the drone behaves and thereby gaining trust in the technology. Taking your drone out for the very first time can be quite intimidating. You probably spent a lot of money of this piece of hardware, but you shouldn't worry that much because DJI products have turned out to be pretty reliable and very rarely fail unless you do something stupid. So if you follow these instructions, you would be perfectly fine. There are no beginner mode on drones that are using the DJI Fly app, but there are ways we can reduce the drone's operational room as well as the speed to make sure that it's perfectly safe for you to take off for the first time. And you can increase that once you have gained more confidence. Start by picking your location. Find a wide open space with a soft ground where you have easy access to go and retrieve the drone in case you are forced to land it. And that you have clear line of sight so you can monitor the drone all the time during the flight. There might be a few more trees here than uh, I would recommend, but this would have to do for this exercise. When you arrive at the location for your first flight, I would recommend to clear the takeoff area for any obstacles or and ensure it's a quiet place like this without any spectators or bystanders. This is really important when you're flying for the first time because as this will add additional stress to your first flight. So these procedures to get your drone ready. Start by checking the weather. I always start out by checking the weather and you can use applications like AirData UAV and uh, let's say that uh, it's one o'clock now, it's now. So I just press this one. Then I can see what the temperature is. I can see the visibility. I can see the wind. And uh, I can also see that the KP index is, uh, is fine. You can, if the weather is a bit unstable and you are uncertain rain is coming, you can use one of the local weather services to pull up a radar map. That will show you a visual representation of any humidity in the air. Make a replay and see if any rain showers or anything are heading towards the area that you're flying. But with the weather like this, under calm conditions, there's really no need to do this step, especially not for flight exercise with limited range of the drone. So next step is that we're gonna establish a takeoff and landing position. And uh, I brought a piece of wood, which is perfectly fine, especially if you're flying from uh, ground like this, to uh, have a safe and solid platform that you can take off and land your drone. I know there are other solutions that can be used for that. So I'm going to this location here, where we're going to run into problems with the trees. And then I'm going to diagonally go to the other side here just to measure how many steps are between these two points. There's 26 steps to this location. Then I'm going 13 steps back. Then this will be my takeoff and landing position. Let's start by unpacking the drone. We take away the gimbal cover, then we unfold it. Then we check the battery level. It's only three dots. So we're gonna take out the battery. Then we're gonna replace it with one that has four, that's fully charged, you know, four LED highlighted. Make sure when you click in the battery that it goes in with a click and it's seated properly. You don't want this disconnecting during flight. Then we're taking the remote. We are mounting the sticks. They are located here on the backside. It's important that you follow the order that you power on the remote first and then the drone. Next, we're gonna pull down the menu here from the top and then we're gonna make sure that brightness is set to full so we have clear visibility of what's going on even if it's a bright sun like like it is here today we make sure to clear the takeoff area for any things that is not supposed to be there so next we're going to establish our virtual fence and the way we do that is that we press here in the top of the screen where it says takeoff permitted then we are getting uh, this menu where we can set the return to home altitude we can set the max altitude and we can set the max distance and what we basically want to do is we want to pull these uh, sliders to the bottom all of them like that. And that will basically determine the virtual fence that we have to work within. And now the people that have paid attention would know that there's more than uh, two times uh, 20 meters here. So this room is actually too small for us uh, to fly safe without being able to collide with the trees. So what you need to know is that you need at least 20 meters on each side of uh, the takeoff position to be able to establish a virtual fence that will protect your drone against collision. But right now we have basically a perimeter 20 meters around the drone, 15 meters in height, where we can safely operate the drone, if there was no trees present within. <laughs> in case you're being asked to calibrate the compass of the drone, simply follow the on-screen instructions and do whatever the interface is telling you to be able to perform that operation. Also make sure that you have plenty of satellites, otherwise it would not say take off permitted if there's not enough satellite presence. So now there's two ways of launching the drone. You can either do it by pressing the sticks inwards, or you can do it by simply using the auto launch function. Simply press the icon that is located here on the left side of the screen, and then you simply hold down the button here, 
and the propellers will start and the drone will race approximately 1.2 meters altitude. And just let it sit there for a second, just to make sure to convince yourself that it's perfectly fine at keeping its own position. So by pushing the throttle stick up, you can increase the altitude. By pushing it down, you can decrease the altitude. And the beautiful thing here is that if you just let, let go of the stick, the drone will stay on the position where you left it. And this is due to all the sensors and the GPS locks and everything that's on board the drone. So you see, you don't need to even fly it. You can just position it somewhere. Let's just put it in video mode. It would be fun for you to have a little bit of video here. So you just start the video here by simply pressing the record button. So the next thing that we're going to do is turn the drone around its own axis. And that's called the yaw motion. And we simply do that by moving uh, the left stick. Uh, we are moving that left or right. So let's just move it to the left side here. You see the drone is turning very, very, it's keeping its own position towards the ground, but it's just turning around its own axis. And you can do it in the other direction by moving, uh, pushing uh, the left stick towards the right. And still, see, the only thing that I'm doing is I'm touching the remote as little as possible here and the drone is just doing what I'm asking it to do. Next, we're gonna try the roll motion. And this is by using the right stick, moving that left and right. So if we just move it like this, very slowly, and to the other side, very slowly. Simply by operating the right control stick, left and right. And because we have reduced the speed by using the cinemote, the drone is not doing anything crazy. We can make the drone go back and forward, and that is called the pitch. And we can do that by using the right stick and simply moving it forward. Then the drone is flying forward, and we're flying it backward. And again, if I just let go of the stick at any point, you see the drone just stops and stays. And that makes it very, very easy to fly these types of drones because uh, the older drones, they didn't have that capability. So you basically needed to uh, operate the sticks all the time to make it work. But here you can just fly it. So now we are pitching forward. We are pitching backwards. Pitching forward. We are rolling to the right. We are rolling to the left. As uh, we saw, we put up an, a virtual fence. We can't test it to fully here because we have trees within the perimeter of 20 meters uh, radius. But what I can do now is I can head towards the end of the perimeter and then the drone should stop when it reaches 20 meters. So let's just try that. So you see, you can see in the base of the UI, you can basically see the distance from the takeoff point and now it hit 20 meters. So basically, the, even though that I'm pushing the drone or the stick, the right stick completely upwards, as you can see, maybe you can't see it. <laughs> I'm going a little bit closer. You can see, I have it completely upwards here and uh, the drone just stays. It will not go any further. We have the same limitation on the height. So if I just go up, you can see that uh, the height is increasing and we set that to 15 meters. And once it hit the 15 meter mark, it will just stop. So that means that you have basically a cylinder that is 15 meters high and 20 meters in radius. So that's really an awesome tool to practice. So if you have chosen a location where there's not that many trees like we have here, you could fly around all sorts of crazy stuff without having to worry about colliding the drone with anything. Let's put it in two meters height here. You could go above the trees, then you are absolutely sure that you don't collide with anything. But let's just try a simple exercise here, and that is to fly to one side here, fly forward, fly to the right, and then back again. Simply practicing flying in squares. This is a really good uh, exercise that will uh, increase your coordination with the drone. So try to fly in squares. I don't know if uh, the, the, the camera actually captured this. 
<laughs> but uh, we should be able to see it here on the map. You can see here is the perimeter that we are working within. And you can see the square that I just flew. <laughs> In the later exercises, we will of course combine the movement so that we are using both uh, sticks at the same time. But for now, if this is your first time out flying, I think you will uh, find this uh, challenge, uh, not challenge, but you'll find this exercise uh, nice to increase your confidence. So now let's put the drone here in safe height above our heads. My head, <laughs> so I don't get shaved. Hey, it's a Mini 3, so it doesn't have any obstacle avoidance. So if I fly to, towards me and I'm standing in the path where it's flying, then it will collide with me. We basically have a back perimeter there as well. <laughs> if I just turn around, you can see there's a lot of trees here that I could have collided with. So right now I have basically 40 meters of runway to play with. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test the speeds of the drone. We will be able to see that down here measured in meters per second. So let's test out the cine speed. So let's give it full speed here. And we can see that at some point it reaches maybe five meters per second, 5.2, 5.4 meters per second before it actually slows down because it reaches the outer perimeter. We basically have three flight modes uh, to uh, work with. The one where you could see it, that's the slowest one. Then we have a normal one and we have a sport one. So let's just try to flick it into normal and repeat the exercise and see how fast it will go. It takes a while for it to accelerate, so we might not be able to uh, reach the maximum speed here, but it will fly faster when you're using it in normal mode. You can see it goes up 6.7-ish before it actually stopped. So let's try to flick it into sport mode. This is the fastest mode. And if you're flying with the uh, drones that they have uh, obstacle avoidance, you need to be aware. You might run into problems there because obstacle avoidance does not normally work when you fly in sport mode. So even though you have a drone that is on the tin says that it's protected, you might run into problems. Now we're trying super sport mode here. Ah, it takes more runway to reach the maximum speed. So once it's time to bring the drone back, so you simply bring back the drone to the takeoff position. So what I normally do is I go here behind the drone, then I make sure to position it above the landing pad and I make sure that I see the rear of the drone because then the sticks are basically reacting like they are. The controls will be reversed if uh, you had it the other way around. So I simply lower it above the landing spot here. Can't go closer. And then you simply just land the drone by pushing down on the, the throttle stick. The other way of landing it is simply to use the land function that is part of the DJI Fly app. You just press here and press land, and then the drone automatically lands on top of wherever it's positioned. So you can decide either way, either land it manually by pushing down on the throttle stick when it's over the landing area, or you can use the automated auto land. I like to land it manually and I would recommend that you do the same. We're also gonna talk shortly about safety, what you do in case that you run into problems. So now I position the drone out somewhere and I want to get it back. You can see that uh, I'm quite far away. I'm like 75 meters away here and uh, I'm in the height of uh, 23 meters. Doesn't work with the 15 meters uh, ceiling that we put in uh, before, also the 15 meters uh, distance. The drone just sits there. So I have increased sort of the operational radius of the drone. So now I'm simply pressing the return to home button. I'm long pressing it. And then the drone starts to return to the home position. So regardless where you are, what will happen is, if you long press this feature, is, or activate the return to home function, is that it will uh, raise to the return to home altitude that you have set in the interface, and then it will simply fly back to the home position or home takeoff position. It's not always 100% accurate when it's landing, so that's why it's really, really good that the same button, if you just single tap it, will work as a pause button basically I bought the mission and that goes for every function inside the drone every automated flight mode that's in there it somehow performs an operation and you don't like whatever it's doing simply press the return to home pause button and then the drone will stop whatever that it's doing and just stay fixed like you see it here what I usually end up doing is uh, I bring the drone back and I let it come down to a reasonable height and then I simply turn it around like this like I taught you before, so it's rear in. Position it above the landing pad, and then I simply bring it down. Then I keep an eye on if it's above the pad, and I simply hold down the throttle stick until it lands. 
If you're running into problems during your flight, you simply just activate the return to home feature and then it will come back to you. Once the battery is drained to around 20%, you will get a low battery warning and being asked to return to home. If the drone is closer than 20 meters from the takeoff point, you would probably have to fly it back manually yourself. But if that is not the case, the return to home feature will automatically kick in. So this is basically what happens if you ignore it. When it reaches 10%, it's actually going to auto descent wherever it is located. <laughs> but can actually keep it airborne by just pushing up the throttle stick. In an area where you don't want the drone to land, you can basically fly it around still, but you need to keep the throttle stick up because it is trying to land all the time. So just know that and uh, take it very, very seriously when you get to this point. <laughs> you really need to start bringing the drone back here over the landing pad. You see now it's, it's landing. I'm not doing anything. It's just landing by itself and it goes down nicely. Ah, it cuts a little bit of grass. <laughs> This covers the part about safety. So this concluded your first flight exercise. And as you can see, there's not much to it. I fully understand if you haven't flown a drone before that this is quite intimidating. But if you follow the steps that I've presented in this guide or in this lesson, then you are perfectly fine. Don't make the mistake that I did here, selecting an area where there's trees in close proximity. You need at least 20 meters of radius. I would probably say you need 30 meters. So there's some sort of way room for the GPS accuracy. So if there's like 30 meters around in the perimeter around the drone, you are perfectly fine. Note that the return to home feature does not kick in if you're only 15 or 20 meters away from the takeoff position. The drone will just stop and sit and wait. So if you're gonna try that feature, then you have to increase the perimeter. So after you have tried this, note that I've created a post in the first Drone Academy that is related to this exercise. If you have any feedback or things that you think should be different or difficult to understand, then head in there and drop your comments and then let's improve this together. So I hope you like this exercise and I'm looking forward to the next one where we're gonna turn it up a notch. Thank you. And as always, it has been a pleasure and hope to see you in the next flight exercise.